In this episode, we go back to Evans Creek Off-Road Vehicle Area in Washington for a shootout between the Turlow's Garage Jeep Liberty and the Turlow's Garage Jeep Grand Cherokee to see which one will come out on top. Both these Jeeps drive in, but only one of them drives out. Evans Creek is an off-road playground with lots of trails, campgrounds, and there's tons of UTVs, ATVs, Jeeps, off-road vehicles there. Before you even get there though, right off the 165 there's a rock, which is a great proving ground for some of the Jeeps. The Grand Cherokee being all-time all-wheel drive just has very little problem tackling these obstacles. I could pick just about any line, any obstacle, anything anywhere, and it would climb over it. Without any kind of lift kit and on street tires, there did have a bit of a ground clearance problem and it bottomed out quite a bit. The Jeep Liberty, however, does not have any electronic traction control. It does not have any kind of locking differentials. It's just got the positive traction in the back. No locking differential in the front. It's an open diff. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth. Get comfortable. This takes a while to get through this. Turning the wheel to the right. Okay, right there. I had my wife in there originally trying to make this happen. After several attempts back and forth, she finally gave up. I jumped in and uh, I had to make several attempts too to find the right line to get the Jeep, to get the Liberty through this obstacle. This is the problem we have with the Liberty. We're on uh, just the uh, right front and the left rear right now. So the positive traction in the rear is good, but it's not good enough to get out of here. And then the left front just doesn't have the lock, there's no lock or anything in the front. So I'm going to try to get back up. And just like the Grand Cherokee, the Liberty is on street tires with no lift kit. It had a ground clearance problem. It gets high centered a lot. Oh, I find if I work the wheel back and forth, I could always get out of any place where we got stuck in. Whoa, look at that. So off-road ability, that goes to the Grand Cherokee. The Liberty struggled with a lot of these obstacles. Not that it couldn't do it, but you really had to be careful with the lines you picked, where you put your tires, and uh, the weight distribution of the wheels. And you really had to go for it quite a bit. I hope you built up enough speed to carry you over the top of some of these obstacles. When I was going back and forth trying to get through that mud hole, I kept sliding off to the right into the bank, and that's where the mud came from on the right rear corner of the Liberty. We're going to look at compare the turning radius of the Grand Cherokee and the Liberty. What I've done, I've got a starting line scribed in the ground here for the Grand Cherokee. And what I'm going to do is I'll scribe the turning radius and we'll see which one has a better turning radius, the Grand Cherokee or the Liberty. So there's where we started at. There's the circle scribed around. All the way back to the start here. We'll do the Liberty next. So here we are, Jeep Liberty's lined up. There's the box around the front wheel. There's the line marking the rear wheel. So now let's do this one. So unfortunately I did not bring a tape measure to measure it. But you can see the scribe line there. There's the one from the Grand Cherokee. There's the one from the Liberty, so it definitely has a tighter turning radius. And we'll have to look online to see what uh, the actual measurements are. The actual measurements for the Liberty is 17.95 compared to the Grand Cherokee's 18.55. 
In real life, the circles I scribe seem to be a lot bigger difference than that. But we definitely, it's definitely noticeable when you're on a trail, you need to make a tight turn or turn around. The Liberty is a lot easier to make a U-turn or to turn around than the Grand Cherokee is. It does have a shorter wheelbase, but I mean, it's got a real, real nice, real tight turning radius. The Liberty definitely has a bit of an advantage when you're really trying to whip it around a corner because you can actually put it in two wheel drive. Uh, the Grand Cherokee's all wheel drive. It's really hard to slide it. So for a tight turning radius, the Liberty definitely wins that. It's got a much tighter turning radius than the Grand Cherokee. For sliding it around the corner, the Liberty definitely has the advantage of being able to put it in two wheel drive. The Grand Cherokee, I tried it with and without the traction control. It really didn't matter actually at all. It seemed to do the same thing with the traction control on or off. Uh, it just seemed to push and it also had the wider turning radius. So both of those contests, definitely the Liberty is the winner. For going down trails, by far, by far, the Grand Cherokee is way more comfortable to sit in, way more comfortable to ride in. Took the bumps a lot better. The, the, the suspension is not as tight, it's not as rough. Uh, just way better to go down the trails. For cargo carrying capacity though, the Liberty has 69 cubic feet of cargo space where the Grand Cherokee has 67.4. So for cargo capacity, the Jeep Liberty definitely has more cargo capacity than the Grand Cherokee, which really surprised me. But for comfort, you cannot beat this Jeep Grand Cherokee for comfort and ease of off-road ability. Fuel mileage going to work and back uh, using the same vehicles on the same routes. I average about 17 miles per gallon in the Liberty and I get about 15 in the Grand Cherokee. So for fuel mileage, the Liberty definitely has an advantage. For towing capacity, the Liberty is rated at 5,000 pounds, which really surprised me. I don't think I would tow 5,000 pounds with it. The Grand Cherokee is rated at 6,500, which I've towed some pretty heavy weights with it. It has done very well. So the grand total for off-road ability, Grand Cherokee, turning radius is the Liberty. Tight turning radius is the Liberty. Cargo size is the Liberty. Comfort is a Grand Cherokee. Fuel economy is a Liberty and towing capacity is a Grand Cherokee. So we have a score of four to three. There's one more obstacle I want to try with these Jeeps. I call it the Jeep Wash. It's like a pond that I drive the Jeep through. The, you see the Liberty go through it in the first world best Jeep ever made video. And I'm going to take the Cherokee through it now and see how it does. So the Grand Cherokee developed uh, a lot of problems after going through the Jeep wash. Namely, it got stuck in park, it wouldn't come out, it was stuck in four low and had a knocking noise coming from the engine compartment somewhere and the engine was running really rough. So more to come on that. We tried to use the Liberty to pull it uh, to a, a place where it could be towed. Unfortunately, it was stuck in park. I had to call in a flatbed tow truck to come and get it, which took the better part of the day. So more to come on what went wrong, what broke, and what I'm gonna have to do to fix this now. But I think the bottom line, undisputed winner of the Jeep Liberty versus Grand Cherokee is gonna be the Liberty. I just don't think this thing is gonna die. I don't think there's anything you can do to kill it. It is an indestructible beast, other than apparently the engine overheating is an Achilles heel on the Liberty. The Liberty seems to be the best all-around choice for just about anything you need other than comfort, although thank you to Kevin for the suggestion of getting some uh, comfortable seat covers to cover the seats to make it a little more palatable for someone my size. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you can be notified as soon as we drop the video on what I'm going to do with this Jeep engine. Uh, if you want some updates between videos, you can always tune in to my Instagram and Facebook. 
for uh, daily weekly updates and we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching